I should like to be able to create a substance or a machine with such a horrific capacity for annihilation that wars would become impossible forever. You are here to participate in an atomic maneuver. Atomic weapons are truly powerful, but they don't mean the end of all life as so many people think. You can live through an atomic attack, and by taking common sense precautions, live to fight another day. Watched from a safe distance, this explosion is one of the most beautiful sights ever seen by man. You're probably saying, so it's beautiful. What makes it so dangerous? You can have a chemical explosion in which the heat and gas is produced by the energetic decomposition of a, of a material, an explosive. Or you can have a nuclear explosion where the product is really just energy. There's no, there is no gas given out as such in the course of a nuclear explosion. And the blast that you get from a nuclear explosion is purely caused by vaporization of the surroundings. What's happened is there has been direct conversion of mass into energy by Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared. And that is where the energy has come from. It's only a fraction of the mass of the original atom that's been lost. But that fraction, when you sum it over all the atoms of plutonium or uranium in a nuclear device, that provides a huge amount of energy. Bacon and Nobel would have recognized Robert Oppenheimer's symptoms that irresistible urge to witness a new form of explosive power. This time it was a bigger bang in a bigger backyard, but the dream was the same, a belief that the experiment was so dangerous it would never be attempted again. Before dawn on July 16, 1945, at the Alamogordo Army Air Base in New Mexico, a small band of... After the bombs had been dropped on Japan, the scientists returned to restage the first test for the cameras. Two minutes to go. Stretched out on the sand, tensely expectant, were General Groves, Dr. Bush, and Dr. Conan. In the control shack was Dr. J. R. Oppenheimer, who, assisted by Dr. I. Rabi and others, had directed the making of the bomb itself. The automatic controls got it now. Rob, this time the stakes are really high. It's going to work all right, Robert, and I'm sure we'll never be sorry for it. When they first started planning these tests, there was some fairly strong consideration that the detonation of the nuclear weapon would start an atmospheric chain reaction. And uh, obviously that would be the end of the world. But the, the calculations that they did at that time showed quite conclusively that, that there was no danger of an atmospheric chain reaction. But it, it was a worry to begin with. Minus 10 seconds. Five seconds. Now! When it went off in that New Mexico dawn, that first atomic bomb, we thought of Alfred Nobel and his hope, his vain hope, that dynamite would put an end to all wars. The outtakes from this atomic melodrama are painful to watch. The pathos of the script, all too obvious to Oppenheimer. Go ahead, please. The automatic controls got it. This time around, stakes are kind of high. Oh, it's going to work all right, Robert. And I'm sure we'll never be sorry for it. Cut. Go ahead, please. This time, Rob, the stakes are pretty high. It's going to work all right, Robert. And I'm sure we'll never be sorry for it. The truth came out 20 years later. A few people laughed. A few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds 
I suppose we all thought that one way or another. In the nuclear standoff which followed, there were times when the end of the world did seem close. Yet the Cold War was a war of words, a war which never happened. Now the old weapons are lined up, linked by shock tube and semtex, awaiting public annihilation. This is a large megaphone, and it's going to focus a lot of sound directly at the audience. Right at the audience, right there. Oh, they're going to like this a lot. <laughs> yeah. So what do you put inside? Everything. Everything we have left over, we're going to make a, like a mortar out of it. Project sound and a lot of sparks and stuff like that as a finale. Why not? Can it be that simple? Is that the end? The search for the ultimate explosion will not stop. And one day, there'll be another experiment that we'll wish had never been attempted. The nuclear explosions as we have done them so far are the most powerful explosions yet created. That's not the same as saying that they are the ultimate in terms of explosive power. If you think about what's happening in a nuclear explosion, you are only converting a fraction of the mass into energy. And theoretically speaking, at least, you could consider converting rather more of the mass into energy and in the extreme case you could consider converting all the mass into energy and that type of reaction would be for example a matter-antimatter reaction where you get total annihilation and entire conversion to to energy now in principle that would be obviously a far more energetic process I mean are you talking about total annihilation of everything no just total annihilation of the matter and antimatter that comprised your bomb 